music has changed. How it makes us feel never will. The time is now to visit mstudios.co.za. Brought to you by Old Mutual. Hi, I'm Mac G, and this is the Amp Studios Creative Industry Podcast, a series of masterclasses that are designed to help you build a business in the music industry. Proudly brought to you by Old Mutual. Amp Studios is a free culture hub facility situated in the heart of downtown Johannesburg in Newtown with uh, world class recording studios, co working spaces, video facilities, a stage, and streaming facilities, all free and designed to help young artists build a career in the music industry. If you'd like to be a part of the AMP Studios or check out all the masterclasses and content we've created for you, just go to www.ampstudios.co.za or send us your name to our WhatsApp line on 081-707-6636. That's 081-707-6636. Cuesta is an iconic South African rapper and songwriter. Join us for part two as he continues to share his experiences in the music industry and how he has created his longevity in the business. Now, obviously, uh, everybody's journey is different. Yeah. And we all need to make mistakes to grow as people. What are some of the biggest mistakes that you've incurred in your career? Not paying attention. There's things that I feel like now I should have known and I don't. Because my only focus was getting out there and they got it, you know. As much as I know they got it, I need to know from a paper trail point of view, from an everything point of view. It's not as to ignore the back end of the business and go, they're doing their thing. But it's to not engage with it and try and be the guy that does it. But you must know what goes on the whole time. All my relationships in music or with the people I've worked with were kind of just, yeah, go do that. I'll go do that you know, uh, without even the communication in between. I've made many financial mistakes, you know, of putting money into things just for keeping up with so-and-so, keeping up with the game that didn't really speak to where I was going as a human being or as an artist, you know. So I've made a lot of mistakes, bro. And these are the things that make me okay with knowing my limitations and knowing what I can or can't do and also defining a limitation and just laziness, you know. I've always thought it was not caring about and not looking at the bank statements or the what what the invoice was, you know, not looking at those things. It's just lazy. It's not really just you wanting to just be in studio. It's being lazy because all you have to do is know. And that's about it, you know, so that when you question anything or questions arise, all of you have the same answer because all of you know what the hell's going on, like the back of your hand. So the biggest mistake I made was to not make sure that I know everything. Wow, man. Yeah. Couldn't have said it better myself. We're going to be taking some questions from the audience to the legendary Questa. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. All right, here we go. Hola. Hey, <laughs> How are you? <laughs> sure, sure. How do I transition from faking it to making it? Not really faking, faking, ne? because I feel like my brand is built. Okay. You know, my quality is good. My okay. voice is good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I even met you at the by, by South by Southwest. I don't know if you remember. Oh, yeah. Remember? Yeah. That's, that's yes. Texas. Yeah. So yeah. I've, I've been trying. I've been pushing. Wait, you've been trying and pushing by yourself. You got all the way to South by Southwest. With Imexa, yeah. Okay. I've been doing it independently. Okay. Yeah, so I'm tired. Like, I'm tired of being independent and not making it. I'm frustrated. Mm. I really, really... I need a breakthrough. First of all, I don't, I don't want to say don't be hard on yourself. It's, it's, it's needed. You, you kind of have to be a little bit. But you've done so much already. Just generally doing that all by yourself is not an easy thing. There's a lot of big artists who haven't left the country you know, about anything. So you've done great in that, in that regard. What I think you kind of have to see is that as much as that is great, I think first you have to connect with the people around you or, or closer to you with regards to building your brand and the music that you make do people around you kind of say that also do you think where you play the music it invokes like a positive sort of response from people or is it really just you feeling confident about your stuff you know i think you have to figure that out and kind of have an honest conversation about that we think and we want our stuff to be good but when we play it, it's not quite... And I'm not saying that's what's happening with your stuff. But I think that honest conversation is something you have to do because... Well, because that's how you determine what else to do, you know. And, and really, how do you make it from... You said not really faking it, but from like kind of 
just trying and really doing it is to keep doing it. I mean, I know you said your journey was long. You keep doing it. And if the one thing doesn't work, you try another thing. And by thing, I mean, maybe play around with different sounds and different genres and try to see maybe what the people are connecting with and not really make that, but try and have you and your identity of music or, or your style uh, sort of fit in with what maybe a market of sorts that you have chosen or that your music caters for and try to see if that works. I think as much as it's dope that you're in a masterclass like this, I think it's important to connect with the spirit of who you are musically. Then I think if all those things are a check, these things that I'm saying, if you think you got them, then it's just a matter of time. I might not be sure because I don't know the whole story of what you might not be doing right. For me to answer your question is to just keep doing it. You just persist. And I know you've probably heard this a million times, but then everybody that said that is right, you know, to tell you that and and i can see your passion in your eyes it's crazy and it seems real but don't let that stop and improve in the music because i think if you got all those things then we have to have a conversation with self about the music itself and go what is wrong with the music you know after going there's nothing wrong with the push there's nothing wrong with the hustle but what's wrong with the music so question yourself and be honest with the answers with the things around you and i think that should sort of give you an idea and something should give you should know at least where to go next or what to do next um i'm the imperial thug hi guys i'm selassie so what's that the imperial imperial thug imperial Thug. Yeah, uh, I wanted to ask. It's not like a long question, but it's more artistry. Yeah, I remember like I think it's the 2016 Metro Awards when you won, and you like even skinny guys get recognition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. I feel like that was dope. I felt yeah. like everyone kept looking past me because I was so skinny. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've gotten into this thing. Like, if you're an artist, there's like a lot you experience about yourself, you realize about yourself. Yeah. And then you, one thing that we know about you is that you have that voice. Yeah. You know, and that grungy voice that everybody didn't really know about in the past, like era Boom Shakalaka. Oh, yeah. And after yeah. that. I think so, Boom Shakalaka was like kind of like the first. It was Yeah, starting. it wasn't really yeah. there, but it was. Yeah. So like the moments of you prepping yourself to, oh, I have actually a good voice and yeah. I can like really use it rather than the way I've been using it now. Yeah. How did you actually come about to, I don't know, mixing it up and also fusing it with the genre that you were actually going for? Okay. And after that, um, what have you learned more about yourself as an artist? I think it's, 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 it, Young was, was was like a matter, of, like I find out things about myself all the time and I try not to ignore them. And as soon as I... As soon as I just decided to be, you know, a rap how I spoke. I remember even making a good, I, I literally woke up from my Borisa's couch and he was messing around with the beat. And I literally just started mumbling stuff on the mic. There was no words. It was really just... And eventually I turned it into words. But it's that process of really just saying, I'm just going to be, bro. You know, I'm not going to try and follow these rules or whatever. I just decided to be me and just started rapping. It just happened. I literally said, F it. I'm just going to be, you know. And... And what have I learned about myself as an artist is collaborations. In a collaboration, I ask more of myself and I ask myself to do more and I demand more of myself. And I think that's dope because that means I also take a lot from a lot of artists that I collab with, which then in turn means I also kind of grow, you know. So that's one thing I've learned. Shabfede, um, Kamala Muyonge. How do you position yourself in the digital world? Since we know that everything is going digital, okay. and how do you keep your social relevance and that are in line with what you believe is the best things for the brand? To answer your first one, how do I position myself in the digital world? That's why I have a team, bro. Well, that's why you try and gather a team. I mean, I've been trying to understand so much of social media and uh, from a point of view of where would my space be? Where would I fit in? Because... I struggle with a tweet. What I do is kind of pick and choose the stuff I want out there, really. And as much as I engage with, with the people that follow me, that's just on conversation level, you know. That's just us connecting and talking, you know. I try not to put on a Questa jacket or a Questa hat, you know. So I don't have, like, a an alter ego. If I'm socially relevant, then... There goes the music also, I guess, you know, because it's really one person. I don't put it on and take it off. Um, yeah, my question is, uh, were your parents or the people like that raised you supportive of your career and the music thing? And how did you know that rap was the, like, was the thing for you? Like, Well, my parents, cool. No, B. Uh, not at all. I mean, it wasn't all their fault because they didn't have a lot of reference to go. 
oh, this is how it looks like when it works. That was close enough, at least for them to be to be comfortable with me doing it, you know. So naturally, they're like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, born low, you know. And and you, I kind of had to do drastic things like run away from home and this, that, and the third, you know. And I think what ended up convincing them is how they saw how relentless I was, you know, and how driven, and and they kind of just flipped their approach and just went, let's see what happens when they support. And as soon as they did that everything just started sort of coming together. But now nah, it was a hard fight to convince the parents that this is something I'm seeing because it's something they've never seen before and it's something they, they can't reference close enough for them to be comfortable. So um, I don't blame them. I'm not, I don't have anything against them. I understand, mommy, especially now because I'm a parent. I'm like, oh, I get it. You know, I'm inspired by different people at different times, you know. Um, I don't unfortunately have one person that I go, Everything you do, I just wish I could do. Except just maybe pray for the strength that my mom has, you know. All it love is just someone else with the strength game. But generally, I, I get inspired by people and, and places and things, like environments, like where I go and the type of lifestyles people have and the type of conversations I have with people are, are really things that are inspiring. And anybody that, that sort of has a story of having changed a situation from one of a change for the better in, in their well-being is an inspiring story. But And there's so many of those. There's not one thing that inspires me except the story of overcoming is the, the thing that inspires me. And, and just going to places as far as creatively, going to places and having conversations is really what makes the music for me. Yeah. I hope you're enjoying this episode of Amp Studios Music Industry Podcast. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after these. What if you could be rewarded for taking control of your finances? Old Mutual Rewards wants to partner with you on your journey towards financial well-being and empower you to achieve your financial goals. With Old Mutual Rewards, the more you learn, the more you earn. You'll be awarded points for making use of Old Mutual Rewards online assessments, calculators, short courses and other financial tools. You could also earn points for successfully referring a friend. Additional points are awarded when your financial needs are met with certain old mutual products. And for every 10 points you earn, we'll give you one rand that you can reinvest into the savings portion of your old mutual money account or two-in-one savings plan or spend at any of our many reward partner stores, see our website for a complete list, or even donate to charity. Registration is easy. Just go to the Old Mutual Rewards website at www.oldmutual.co.za forward slash rewards and sign up. It's free and open to everyone. So why not join today? Welcome back. Let's get back into this week's Amp Studios Music Industry Podcast. My question yep, yep. is, basically what I've taken out of this conversation today is the importance sure. of collaboration yeah, yeah. a lot. You know, you you spoke about it, whether it's a relationship with, you know, a student from after that you wait for outside yeah. or the type of people that you associate yourself with. Yeah. So in terms of you and your collaborations that you've done, how do you interpret your vision of the song to them so that they give you the same content and same energy that you want in that song, especially being a person who also raps in Venek as well? How we worked that was obviously technology, you know, I, I didn't really go back and forth and fly into and out of the states you know so i kind of showed them it sent them things and videos and from interviews to to music videos that i'd shot and things like that to kind of explain what i represent generally so there's an understanding of that and you also kind of have uh, a back and forth or a talking about what the songs are about you try and bring yourself as much as possible to, to kind of explain it visually you know um, this is where also the visual thing becomes important because it tells the story where so they can understand that this is what this is being this is what is being represented and as far as where the song is going and you get it right here you get it wrong there it's like i've worked with also just a bunch of other artists from the rest of africa and you try to make it as clear as possible and you're trying to still keep the song as good as possible but it's like any other thing i mean uh, some things are lost in translation, some things are gone right. Hi, um, my name is Dylan in Art DK, and this I've only started actively working in music very recently, but I've yeah. been writing lyrics for quite a long time. And the biggest problem I come into when I'm writing is how to keep finding inspiration on what to write about, what to write, how to get out of a block, because it's yeah. something I run into quite often. And another question I have is, how often will you sacrifice rhyming and wordplay for the meaning? Yeah. And how often will you prioritize the rhyme scheme for 
I don't know, effect on the yeah. beat? Yeah. To answer your first question, I mean, I think we all uh, we all hit like a, a writing block. I kind of literally let it go. I stop and just go play soccer, go kick a ball for, or, or pick up something. I just start a new routine for like a week or two weeks or whatever, and then get back into the creative side flowing. And how often will I will I sacrifice meaning for for rhyme schemes? It depends on the song. I rap, you see, and and in sort of rap music, there's there's, there's like a an element of of just really showcase. If I'm trying to showcase the skill of rap, the meaning then becomes how dope I am. As I said that, I don't kind of just do the music to prove that I can rap. I kind of just want to say something. Whether I'm talking about us having fun or whatever, I'm, I kind of just want to describe a feeling, you know, or capture a feeling. It happens still. I mean, I still rap just to rap, just to kind of, you know, rap and just do it and showcase. But a lot of the things are really just about something, at least. It has been sacrificed. I have sacrificed it quite a bit. Actually, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Sambona, hello, say, hello, hello, uh, Mr. Taka. Like, he, like, feel like I'm yeah. Let's generation lay before Nina, like about double HP, about sleek, about about pro. Sure. I feel like you're not grooming, you know, yeah. the, the next generation. Yeah. Yeah. So my question is to you guys, as the older kids, are you also like um, grooming the younger kids, or is there yeah. a change of times? It's more like do it on yourself and I'll yeah. do it on my own. Is, yeah. is there is there like change? Something um, like that. I hear you and I see that a lot. And what you're saying is very right. I've seen it quite a lot. And I do it. I can't speak for everybody else. But, well, maybe I slightly can. I mean, if you think about maybe a Casper, you know, and the work they've done with maybe a Nadia Nakai, you know, or they've put on people and kind of had them around until they can build their own thing and do their own things, you know. But not a lot of us do that. I mean, I've worked with like Umakwa, you know, a TLT, you know what I'm saying? Well, X and I are the same, you know, but, you know, you try and take on what works with, with regards to energy and what you feel you can offer to a person. So I personally do that a lot, especially through collaborations. I, I collaborate with people just based on Yo, I think the stuff is dope. And and there's different ways in people sort of show love or or try and groom, you know. I will do it through TLT no Marqua, you know. Um and because now it's like a the whole game is I can do it in my bedroom. I think a lot of the guys that now OGs are sort of feel like, oh, okay, then do it. I don't know if that's good for the sport or it really kills the grooming part you know but uh on my bit i try you know i'm not gonna groom everybody and i don't even know if i'd be grooming all i all i will know is that i think you're dope and let's give you a shot and let's see what you can do on this platform and, and that's really all that can be offered but i fear a sense of expectations from them, then the new guy who expect guys to do things for them you know um that's that's a dangerous place to be but also I think there the, the should be a sense of responsibility from the guys who who are uh, uh, young tall. So it's like a catch to But at the end of the day, it's the it's it's really a choice. I think you know if it happens, it's so great. It's still it's still going to be up to you. Get fun. Uh, morning, everyone. My name is Tammy, aka Everybody Loves TQ. Uh, Everybody loves TQ. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, so I'd like to start by thanking M Studios, Meg G, Questa for so, honoring us for well us honoring you. Yeah. Which way is it the other way? No, so, no, it's it's you guys. It's it's the I'm grateful for for the presence yeah. for the presence. <laughs> sure. All right. Uh, my question is a personal one. Uh, I feel like as an artist, I like umchita kasi, but I'm also a dude from the burbs. Like yeah. my whole life, literally, I've been mixed on both sides of the playing field. You know, I've stayed in kasi. Yeah, look, shin marim pinchi. They're on the other side of the... You get what yeah, I mean, right? Bring your suzulu and then say... What's up, bro? Yo, what's up, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's been my situation. And um, I feel the complications because even as a person, like I'm a person that's up to date politically. I'm a person that's... I love to turn up. Like yeah. I'm... I'm very complex, so yeah. And um, also, when I when I approached like your Sony's, your Universal, they say I need to stick to an image. But it seems that um, in the field that you guys are in, on the upper class and the upper, you need to have a certain image. Like when we see you, this is what we see. And for me, that's complex. I don't know how to go about that. Yeah, dope, man. That's uh, as a question, dope question. Just you're blessed, first of all, to be able to do so many things, right? Um, I think you should note that it's it's not a bad thing, regardless of who says what. You know, as far as picking which one to do and which one to stick to, 
you kind of pick the message, I think, in your case, because you can do all these things. You kind of have to go, this is what I want to say consistently for so long so that people can kind of get familiar with something at least, you know, so they don't get, don't get lost in, in the trail of trying to follow you. Because, oh, begala manje, you know? So I think just for sake of consistency, that's why they'd probably say, ah, you need to stick to one thing as regular, and I think that's what they mean. But you don't have to if you don't want to. Just do you, man. Don't let anyone bullshit you about that, you know? You're a guy that tells stories and, and sells songs and makes music, you know? How you look is, is how you want to look. People at the end of the day focus on the music and, and what you're saying, especially if they've decided to listen to you. The struggle is getting people to listen or at least long enough to decide what they think, you know. It's not really for them looking at you long enough to decide whether they like how you look or not. And a lot of people would argue this and say, yeah, it's important. And maybe it is. I don't know. I've never really had one, you know, except maybe just the dreads. But I don't have a certain one way of dressing. I don't, I don't think about it. And if you want to, you can. But if they're saying you must bull****. Okay, my name is John, and I love Vulama Gate. <laughs> Earlier on, you spoke about the fact that you were not making money for the better part of this year. And I think we all know what happened without repeating that dreadful word. This year certainly has been the worst year for many artists. In fact, not only artists, of Hong Kong. If I were to use a local lingo, you know, it's heard about to get the headline or get the Oh, yeah. yeah. So, and um, I got it, now, what, what I want to understand from you is that having seen what actually happened this year, is there anything that you're going to do differently? I was fortunate enough to kind of be well prepared, at least to to be able to still be alive and, and be able to buy sync on and on, you know. But it's difficult to kind of have a foolproof plan of what you would, you're going to do if this ever happens again, seeing as it's something that... I find you know it's not like you can you can go. But now I think what what I took away at least as a lesson is that we now know that everything can go to shit, right? We 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 at least know that and have seen it firsthand. So from relationships with money and really our relationships with the market and with the fans, you know, um, I think in how you plug in and where you plug in as far as virtual shows go, as, as far as curating sort of I don't know other technological advancements to kind of connect with people and finding those. Everybody has to change their outlook on everything on their relationships with people, money, and, and their lifestyles. Figure out creative ways of how to connect with the people and also very importantly make an income the job is to be aware and act upon you know so i'm gonna do it i'm gonna try it i'm gonna make a lot of mistakes i'm gonna get a lot of things wrong but the awareness and the action upon knowing that we're in the pits is, is definitely something i have and hello everyone yeah, uh, my name is miana what do you do in a situation where there's somebody big that you want to work with yeah but this person is a rival your mentor or your manager or your friend or your acquaintance whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do in a situation where you want to work with this person, yeah. but you don't want to be in a situation where you have to choose between my emotions or my feelings of... So what do I do if I'm Nadia Nakai and I want to work with AKA? Yeah, but AKA and Nadia... And Casper don't get along. They don't get you along. You are Nadia Nakai. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what do okay. I do in that situation? I, don't, I, I guess the respectful thing to kind of let it be known that you want to work with this artist. And if there's resistance, go work with the artist because I think the a dangerous thing would be to not let you do what you, what I'm saying I'm grooming you to do. You know, if I'm saying I don't like Mac G, don't go on his show, then I'm limiting you as far as reach and as far as your story being told because of my relationship with Mac G. No, man, just do it. If you think it's what you want to do, man, just do it. Just go make the song, bro. But they'll deal with each other. Just just go make the song, you know? <laughs> oh. Okay, just want to let everybody know I'm Tunes RSA. Tunes. Where do you want to see South Africa in the next 20 years? Like South African music and the style probably and like just the culture. I don't know what's going to happen in 20 years. I don't know if I'll be playing a role in the music industry in 20 years. But I would like it to be full of people who who are about what South Africa will be about in 20 years, you know, who will tell that story. If our story is that of success where maybe there's honest politicians, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but really, I just want it to represent itself and I, I want it to have sold itself to the rest of the world as a force that is itself. I want it to affect the rest of the world and not be really sort of influenced a lot by the world. I don't want us to copy anymore you know i want people to kind of make cheap versions of our shit and then we say yeah that's a cheap version hello everyone my name Sir. is mega ambition 
What are your strategies that you use to keep your brand going to stay relevant in the game? My second question, what are your challenges that you faced when you are an upcoming artist? Yeah. I don't know, man. I'm just myself. And I think people kind of appreciate that. A lot of people connect with that. And it's also, I think I've found some way to kind of also put this person that I am in the music. And I think that's how the relevance is because I grow as a person and the music grows itself. You know what I mean? If you think about it, you make a song like Ngut because Shaya. And then you make a song like You know, so it's like a, a real life thing. As I grow, people kind of grow with me and, and stuff. And, and I think that's what they connect with. I don't know. I hope so. Your other question was uh, the challenges of faced. First of all, it was resource. I'm told, Justin Jaguti will record. It was, it was a nightmare just to get that. I remember when Suga and I used to walk to a talk. It's just not a long distance, but it's, a, it's like a good, a good hour and a bit walk, you know, to where I was going, just to record, you know, because around me I'm not for going except that. And then as soon as you kind of got it done and you recorded something, it started becoming platforms, you know, to to perform, you know, to to sell the music, to talk about your music, you know, interviews and stuff like that. But those things are overcome by just persistence and khalulupa. Like I said, you must do to that after guy, you know, and just keep being persistent and just going there and doing those things. You know, I remember I used to, I was one of those cats that just used to be there with FM, you know, the, the entire time. It's apparently trying to get a good 16 in, you know, before even um, thinking season scoop. There was there was a rap activity jam, you know, by, I was that guy. So that's how much I'd fight also for the platforms. You know, I went to the radio stations and camped outside, got a couple chances to rap. And as soon as I got that chance, got another chance you know and eventually won a competition won the first week won the next week won the month you know going there to try and coming back about 20 times having failed and then maybe the 21st time again go back in again for the next 10 so just persistence but it's platforms platforms were a big challenge you know it's easy i don't want to say it's easier now now you can you can just do it and plug it in online and just get people going into try and watching it but we had to go to the radio stations because we couldn't we couldn't really upload stuff on youtube and even if we could technologically we just didn't know how to awesome guys thank you so much for the questions uh hopefully you learned a lot and hopefully next time you'll be seeing on this very same couch if you leave here with anything just just leave here with get everything i'm going to do what i'm doing you know and, and just persistence love and and all those things and good luck with all that that was an amp studios music industry podcast brought to you by old mutual i hope you're learning a lot and loving the series Please subscribe right now to make sure you don't miss out on more. And if you'd like to see videos or access more content or even use the AMP Studios facilities, or maybe you just want to be part of our AMP Studios journey, go to our website. That's ampedstudios.co.za, A-M-P-D studios.co.za and sign up there. You can also sign up by sending your name to our WhatsApp line on 081 707 that's 081-707-6636. Music has changed. How it makes us feel never will. The time is now to visit mstudios.co.za. Brought to you by Old Mutual.